Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Tremendous T Thursday. <laughs> My name is Dante Azarmi, and today I'll be talking to you guys about how do successful leaders manage their teams in this crisis. It's a very important topic because this could be a game changer for you in days to come or months to come. Now, let's start with a little uh, bit talk about what this crisis is about. Of course, we're talking about COVID-19, but the second wave of COVID-19. Unlike when MCO started and the pandemic started, now the companies have already acclimated themselves to uh, you know, the new norm and they're actually excelling with the new strategies and things that we have learned. And we're doing really well. But at the same time, our teams feel exhausted. Emotionally and physically, we feel exhausted. And the strategies that we used to, uh, you know, utilize to motivate our teams, you know, don't seem to be as colorful as they used to be. So, and also we're using new strategies. We're using tech, you know, we're using uh, VR and every other aspect to make sure that our company thrives and does well with the new strategies and technology that we have. Now, at the same time, because we're exhausted emotionally, the tasks and sorry the uh, basically the activities and fun hobbies that we used to have like biking uh, the equipment that we bought during the first uh, go of the mco and maybe like a bunch of like gaming equipment and gardening equipment that we bought and we were doing really well we were doing we were really engaged in it we were doing so much we don't want that anymore. We, do, we don't have the enthusiasm to do it anymore. And basically, whatever we bought during the MCO is collecting dust. At the same time, we have emotional amputation. That means uh, in, a, in an instant, for example, we're doing a hobby, we're doing a task. We have no uh, you know, bad emotions or negative emotions coming. And it's suddenly in the middle of washing dishes, for example, you end up feeling like you're sad, you're frustrated, you're angry about something. People have even said that they felt uh, that they wanted to, you know, cry, and that, and you just wonder to yourself, why am I feeling this? All right, and then there's the glimmer of hope of the vaccine, of course, coming up. And even though there is a glimmer of hope, we tend to think to ourselves, when is it coming? When am I going to get it? When is uh, it going to come into my country? And is it safe? There's a whole lot of rumors going around. So we're going to talk about how leaders can help their teammates and themselves to overcome this. But what are leaders feeling at the moment? Leaders are feeling emotional instability or polarized emotions. What does that mean? Instead of, so emotions are layered. For example, uh, melancholy or nostalgia. You're feeling happiness with a glimmer of sadness. You're feeling happiness with like missing something. But polarized emotions, or in this case, uh, instability of it, and means that you will have, for example, anger and only anger and an amplified version of it. And that's actually not good when you're doing team building or for yourself in your daily life. At the same time, stress incidents are becoming more because either it's because of the higher level of workload that we need to acclimate to the current pandemic, or it's because of the emotional instability making the workload that we usually have seem harder than it used to be. Now, whatever it may be, we're also having team defects. So what does team defects mean? Basically, because of this emotional instability and the stress that's involved, our team members tend to have conflict. We don't have that team stability, that power that we used to have. But let's fix that. Let's find out how we can fix that. So in a world that everyone is tired, how do you lead? Now, we are, we are feeling that this, you know, uh, a feeling of slowness, a feeling of defection. What do we usually do if the, this was a computer, right? If we were a computer and we were having defects or, you know, our, you know, our performance was running slow, we would run a scan. We would scan to find out what's the problem. We will scan to find out if there is a virus. Let's do the same thing. Our personal resilience, that factor that keeps us going, like, you know, the warrior than we are let's examine that let's find out how it's doing the first thing we need to do is strength in the face of challenge examine that what does that mean you are faced with a challenge or a task a task that you think to yourself seems a bit more harder than usual right or maybe you're told to like you know break a record and do like more sales than you usually do but for you as a human, you tend to go and say, like, come up with excuses in your own head. Oh, I can't really do this. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, manage this. This is so hard. And then you complain and complain either to yourself or the person giving you the task. And you're losing good time. 
that you can utilize to see that challenge as an opportunity instead, a positive mindset of it, and work your way to actually accomplish that with strategy instead of complaint. So we're going to check and examine that. We have to see how that strength is doing. Are we still as positive as we were before? And then, of course, the ability to bounce back from defeat. We, as, we, as I said before, we do deal with a lot of rejection on a daily basis. And, that, uh, and because of that, we need to realize how we can actually uh, you know, bounce back from it. For example, you have gone so far and you're about to close a deal with your clients, but they come to you and say they can't do it. In this situation, you should never, uh, you know, come up with a negative uh, notion of it. You cannot go and tell the client like, "Oh, you wasted my time," or like, you know, "I don't know what, uh, what was happening." You said yes, and all these things. Don't do that. Communicate effectively. What happened? Well, how, what's wrong? Can I help you? Can I assist you in this? Uh, maybe your loan didn't get the approval. Approval. Maybe I have the connection or the right, uh, you know, uh, thing to do uh, to help you get that loan. And if in the end they say no, look at your uh, client or prospect as a partner. In real estate, they might not buy from you now, but in the future they might. Maybe they're looking for a different type of product. So give them a good service so that you will always stay on the top of their mind and they will actually like always remember to you when they want to uh, you know, buy real estate. Now, the next notion would be ability to overcome obstacles, right? In the beginning of the pandemic, what happened? We didn't know what we were going to do. We were how we were going to uh, show the showrooms to our clients. How were we going to communicate and go see the clients? But everything changed when we sat down together as a team and realized I'm going to use the technology that my company has and do VR or you know should do Zoom calls and take them around and show them uh, the area. Or if they didn't have a loan, I'll find a way to find them a loan. There's so many different ways of doing it. So you taught of solutions. This is what we're looking for. We are going to take away that negative factor that holds you away from actually going and doing something positive, facing a challenge, and to motivate you the right way in this crisis to actually do well, all right? So leaders and your team members, if you're listening, let's get into personal resilience. Now, in the beginning of the pandemic, because it was, well, exciting is a different word, but like, let's say a bit chaotic. It was, uh, you know, it felt like a threat. It felt like a shock to us. So instead of uh, using our psychological stamina, which we'll get into, we use psychological emergency or in a way called arousal, which takes these deep seated uh, resources that we have. For example, if we see that shocking moment or threat coming to us, that makes the psychological emergency and arousal bring out, for example, adrenaline, that fighting spirit, or the mentality to get ourselves together. All right. So, but in the in this moment of time, because we're already used to it, it's the new normal. And even though it's annoying to us, it is the new normal. It doesn't seem as exciting or chaotic or shocking to us anymore. So we need personal stamina. Now, what is personal stamina? To have personal stamina, you need to, first of all, defy the randomness. In the CMCO, turns to RMCO, RMCO goes back to CMCO, MCO. You cannot give yourself uh, the excuse that, okay, um, whatever happens tomorrow might affect me. Instead, you have to tell yourself, whatever happens tomorrow, no matter how random it is in this new normal, I don't mind. I will reach that vision that I have, that objective that I have. I want that. And I won't settle for anything less or let this be an excuse for me. I'll find a way around it to actually find uh, the solution for it and actually go and do what I was doing. The other one would be perseverance. I love this word because it comes from persistence. And you know that's one of my favorite words I've used it in one of my presentations as well. Persistence means you keep going, you don't stand still, you keep going ahead and you are in, you have endurance. Means that when you fail and you fall, you don't let that hit, hit you too hard. You have endurance, you get up and you will actually start persisting and going at it again. All right. That means personal uh, psychological stamina. That is what you need to achieve psychological stamina. Now, psychological stamina rests in a deep-seated emotional patterns that are shaped by our history, how we grew up and things like that, and experiences, whether negative or positive, that we've learned from and are here today. 
and also our personal needs. When we tell you guys don't settle for less, we mean it. Because if you want to reach the heavens, you have to make sure that you have that vision to reach the heavens. And even if you end up on the peak of a mountain, at least you had the vision to reach the heavens. All right? So how do we cultivate this resilience? First off, we need to have we need clear challenges. We need to know what are we going to do next year, the challenges that we have next year. We need it to be in black and white. You need it to be measurable. For example, you have long-term plans that you have, and uh, you tell yourself, my long-term challenge is to make this amount of sales in the full year uh, of 2021. But you also need to have a black and white on what am I going to do in the first half? What am I going to do in the first quarter, second quarter? What am I going to do this week? All right? You need to turn this marathon into smaller sprints for your team to be able to fully understand and grasp what they're doing. We'll get more into that soon. And you also need to tap into your psychological stamina. Now, how do we do that? What are the steps that we need to take? Now, the steps are uh, put there, but we're going to get into it very uh, in detail. First off, you need to understand the difference between urgency and importance. That's very important. And of course, you need to balance, uh, you know, but you have to balance compassion with containment. And at the same time, you need to energize your team every single day. All right? That's one of the hard things of being a leader. You need to keep yourself up and your teammates at the same time. But you can do it. I know and I believe you. And I've seen many, many leaders in our company. You guys can do it. I believe in you. Now, let's talk about understanding the urgency and versus importance. When we are in a crisis, we become a little short-sighted. We're stressed. We don't know what's going on. So the first thing we see is the urgent matter, and we are going to do that. But at the same time, we're humans. So when we accomplish a task, inside our mind, we're like, okay, I've done this. I'm going to take a little chill uh, time to myself. I'm going to go and have my tea or you or know, Rodi China, and I'm going to sit down with my friends in Yamcha because I did something that was urgent. No. In a company perspective, you can never do that. When, and also never say the phrase, when COVID-19 is over, we will address this. Bad idea. Inactivity can breed very, very negative things. So let's talk about a study that was done previously. The study called the challenges of the disengaged mind. What is this? It basically means they put a, a few people inside a room and told them not to do anything and keep quiet for a while. And if and that's it, the only thing they can do. Or they can do electric shocks. What do you think they did? They actually went, and some of them actually went and started electric, uh, giving themselves electric shocks. And that alone tells you the result of a disengaged mind. It basically means that if we are not doing something productive, if we are not growing, it can be actually harmful for us and we can, can bring and can breathe unproductive behavior so let's not do that and because instead of uh, you know if, if we have a good momentum if, 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 if everything is sorry about that if everything is going really well for us in the company in a short-term perspective use that short-term accomplishment to catch a momentum and this momentum will eventually give you the advantage that in a long-term basis that will be your competitive advantage against everyone uh, everyone else all right now are you doing the steps you need to take uh, to you know become uh, to find that competitive advantage are you using those trainings or those uh, you know branding trainings digital marketing are you actually utilizing that or are you going and saying like oh i had the training in the classes and things like that and but i don't really use it i haven't used it or i did a little bit and then i gave up on it no in fact your leaders and leaders you're listening you have to put trainings for your teammates and actually ask them to utilize that in their day-to-day -day lives if you're teaching them digital marketing make sure they're using it to brand themselves because post vaccine is coming and what happens post vaccine when everybody is better and the pandemic is over or whatever it may be a feeding frenzy everyone has been ready to just jump out as this COVID-19 those are the people that are waiting to address the problem after COVID-19 and they are hungry they are waiting to come out and just start selling or doing uh, anything it takes to grasp the advantages. 
you need to be ready for that. So are you doing what it needs to be uh, done to make yourself stronger when you come out? Are you branding yourself right? Are you, you, uh, you know, are you scaling on those sales that you're doing so well? Always use those accomplishments to scale on those accomplishments. Don't use those accomplishments as just something that you're going to put up as like a, a you know, trophy on your wall. All right. So utilize that. You're a warrior. Your sword will go dull if you don't sharpen it all the time. All right. So let's go to balance between compassion and containment. You and your employees or your team members need motivation to act. And to act, you need a balance between compassion and containment. Now, let's talk about something that most people don't usually talk about, and that is mental health. Mental health is incredibly important. And, and if you don't believe in it, there's actually a study that says 270 insurances have told us that mental health issues is as risky as smoking. Just take a moment to think about that, all right? And you need to actually like uh, communicate with your team members. You can't just like let them, uh, you can't just look at them and tell like how they're feeling. Communicate with them, sit to ask them how they're doing. And don't be afraid to relate to them. For example, if your family member, or sorry, if your well, family, of course, your team member uh, is having an issue, if you can relate to the issue, tell them like family, uh, like family problems. Oh yeah, I used to have family problems as well, and this is what I did to overcome them. I engaged more in what I was doing to, you know, uh, get my mind off of it and give them solutions. But talk to them. You know, there is a tox toxic masculinity that we usually have that uh, doesn't allow us to like talk about our feelings or we're worried about you know crying or we're worried about to hug our friend because someone might think that's not cool you know you need to break that you need to break that toxic masculinity and employees and team members actually need more comfort and they need more love than they used to because they're not in a good state emotionally so your job as a leader is to make sure you understand what they're going through relate to them and don't be afraid to open up all right most one of the most uh, amazing bonds happen from opening up so just communicate to your people and of course when you do have that bond what happens you can catch a second win what does a uh, second win mean in uh, when you're in a match for example a boxing match if you are getting beaten up and your your emotions are like really riled up you're thinking about like i'm losing my pride i'm uh you know i'm angry about like how my opponent is doing and like I, my fans are looking at me i don't want to lose that brings that second win and it brings your power so high up that you go in there and you just defeat the opponent right catch a second win if someone is telling you you can't do it in your family like you know tell them tell your teammates if you if someone is telling you that you can't do it prove them wrong don't wait there and say like oh no yeah maybe they're right prove them wrong show them you can be the warrior that you're supposed to be that's the important part and of course find the balance between containment and compassion what do we mean by that? Before I talk about stability, uh, how stability comes forward, let's talk about the balance. This is a really good sentence that I've actually shared with you guys. You are good enough as you are. Now let's get moving to get to the next level. Tell them they're good enough so that they never find self-pity in themselves, that so they know that you can see their value. But at the same time, tell them that even though you are good enough, there are levels that you can go higher. Show them your stories and tell them how you went from what you were to what you are now. And of course, we have stability, how the stability comes, uh, and that's basically by setting limits. Remember, you need rest, you need recovery. You cannot keep going and going and going and you, until you burn out. So find that right limit for yourself and make sure that you rest well and recover from what you are doing, all right? Don't, don't burn the midnight candle until there is no candle. Right? And of course, raise the bar. Yes, set limits, but raise the bar. You have potential to do more. So try to always put targets that are high. You're doing 10 sales a week, try to do 15. Maybe you're doing 15. The challenge that you have overcome, the fear has gone down for 15. Now do 20. Don't wait. Increase, but know your limits. All right? 
and your limit building increase as well as you're going because uh, when you challenge yourself and do things, you grow, and that that's why your limit grows as well. It doesn't stay the same. And of course, keeping the pressure in the optimal level. In martial arts, you know, you have pressure, and like you know, when you're going through education, you have pressure. Pressure helps you learn at some points, but at the optimal level of pressure. So leaders remember pressure but give them positivity while you're pressuring them. Let them know that you're doing this for their good, not because you're just pressuring them to sell more. Don't do that. Tell them, I want you to sell more because I want you to excel. I want you to get better in what you're doing. Tell them and communicate to them why you're pressuring them. That's very, very important. And of course, help each other come out of self-pity. What does that mean? And like basically because of their emotional instabilities that we're going through, we feel that the, we feel self-pity for ourselves. Oh, I'm not doing as well. I'm not doing as well. Maybe my leader isn't okay with me. Tell them that you're okay with them. Or give them constructive criticism. Tell them how they can get better. All right? Now, let's move to energize everyone every day. Now, this phrase comes from one of my favorite uh, companies, and that's Lego. We've all played or seen Lego. And Energizing every day is a very important part and is one of the challenges of the leader because um, you know you have to energize you and your teammates at the same time. But it's good because it leads to something good. So always see what's coming for you. All right. Feel good languages don't really work anymore that much. You know, so you need to find your way. What do I mean by feel good languages? I mean those uh, cliche motivationals. Telling your team. 500 times, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. At some point, your teammate is going to be like, oh my God, no, can you just stop? You know? Give them better emotions. Give them stories. Tell them how they can do it. If you check out how our uh, you know, management team helps motivate the team members, they tell stories. They give you the feeling that you can do the same. You know, so you need to do the same thing with your team members, all right? And of course, now we have an appetite for specific and actionable uh, communication because your team member wants to know, what am I supposed to do? Why am I doing this? And what good does it have for me and the organization? So give them an idea. You know, you don't have to always go into detail and tell them exactly what they're doing, but give them an idea why this is important to you, to, your, to themselves, and to the team as a whole. Right? So how do you energize them? Number one is communication. Never stop communicating. Always have that communication in the era of uh, you know, familiarity with your uh, team members. And at the same time, setting competitions for them. Put a competition, tell them like whoever does this much sales for this uh, period of time can you know get this title or like you know this prize or something like that. Put competition. Good competition actually works to excel positivity as well. Good competition, don't do toxic ones, <laughs> all right? And of course, like I said, share your story. I saw so many of our awesome leaders having like, you know, uh, going into, uh, in the middle of pandemic, and uh, doing so well that they were changing their cars to Maseratis and Ferraris and so on and so forth. And tell them the stories about how you got those, how you got to the point to be able to get these beautiful cars or these uh, dreams that you had and you accomplished them. Talk to them. Talk to them about it and tell them you can do it as well because they can. We all have that potential. So we can. All right. So and of course, shortening endless Zoom meetings. Have effective and efficient Zoom meetings. Don't stall for a very long time not knowing where you are. Have a schedule exactly. Have an agenda of what's going on and go into those Zoom meetings with that idea. You spend too much time, they're already doing so much and they have so much to do as well. Getting stuck in those Zoom meetings is not productive and it can actually bring you some you know, feeling of stress as well. All right, so also, as I said, honest feedback and constructive feedback. There is a difference between giving feedback negatively and bashing someone and to turn around and say, the reason I think this wasn't right is because you didn't do this and this, and I think if you did this, you can actually do it better and give a better result. All right. These are how you energize your, uh, you know, teammates. Now, why do we do this? Why do we need personal resilience? Why do we need this in this time of pandemic? Very simple. 
highly resilient people don't think as this whole crisis as you know something that's going to stay forever they think it's te uh, temporary they see it as a challenge and they know they can change it that's the kind of uh, navigation you need and resilience actually is the uh, navigation unit or the tool you need to navigate through this chaos whether it's going to take a mile or 200 miles if you have that you're going to do well but if you don't what's going to happen you're going to think that every single bad thing the negative thing that happens to you is going to be permanent and then when you start becoming self-destructive or have self-pity oh my god i'm in the middle of this i don't know what's going to do going to happen or what i'm going to do but if you have high, uh, higher resilience in yourself what are you going to do you're going to say, oh, I've been used to this. This is not a challenge that's coming to me. It's an opportunity for me to grow. I know if I face my fears next time when I see a similar challenge, it's not going to bother me as much as it used to be. I had the same thing. You know, I for the, when I started doing certain tasks, I realized that like, oh my God, these are, I don't know how to do them. I, when I wanted to talk for the first time in front of the uh, tribunal or, you know, give a talk, I was scared. I didn't know if I was going to do well, if I was going to ah, da, 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 like you know have that uh, you know uh, freeze in the middle of the camera or in the middle of people. But I did it anyway. And once I started doing it, that fear went away. Oopsie. And that fear basically went away. And I turned my <laughs> you know, thing outside. So before we go and jump into it, managing your mind and taking charge of your destiny is where you your mental you find that mental health to go for that last mile, that mental strength for to, for you to go for the last mile. So whether it's the last mile, whether it's 300 miles ahead, if you find that mental strength, if you have control in how you're doing in your life, that's when you can go any mile that it takes and go forward. So before I thank you all for joining me, if you would like to read more about this article, this was actually an article that I uh, took out from Harvard Business Review and it inspired this presentation uh, under the name, How to Lead When Your Team is Exhausted and You Are Too, by Dr. Bettelsberg. And of course, before I finish up this uh, presentation and have this session with you guys, I'm just going to tell you guys about a quote from Steele, Steve Mar Maraboli from Life, the Truth, and Being Free. Life doesn't get easier or more, uh, more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient. Thank you very much, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Tremendous Tuesday, Thursday. My name is Dante Azarmi, and I hope to see you guys again next week. Take care of yourselves.